Good morning, church. Let's stand up to your feet this morning.
Father God, I just thank you for letting us come here today, God. Thank you for allowing us to worship God. God, thank you for just everything you've done in our lives. Thank you for being our firm foundation. Thank you for never leaving our side. And God, I just pray that this morning we would open our hearts to you. God, that you would let your Holy Spirit speak to us. And God, we just love you and give you all the power and the glory and the honor this morning. And all of us said amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. You guys may be seated. singing that is so powerful that is so powerful that's all I ask God for you to hear at least one word if you hear one word from God not from the preacher but one word from God today in your life in your situation I'll bet you you're going to get out of this place better than you came in and God is just going to do amazing things in your life Kids are dismissed to go to Kids Church 12 and under. Thank you for all those that are helping us with Kids Church. We have some new people jumping in with preschool and with Kids Church. We can still use some more help. We are almost there. We need, I think, one or two more ladies for the preschool and maybe some more people for the Kids Church too for first service so we can open that. And just thank you so much for all those that came yesterday. Man. That was a good day of work. Yesterday, some people came for the first time and said, this is fun, huh? This is fun. This is good. And so thank you for all those that came. If you didn't come and you feel guilty and the Holy Spirit brings conviction on your life, just speak to me. We always have stuff to clean and to do in this place, and we'll be very, very thankful. Two announcements for October 2nd, Saturday, October 2nd. The men are going to wake up really early amen and we're going to be here at eight in the morning for men's breakfast saturday eight the ladies are going to sleep in guys are going to go back home and the ladies tea party starts at two in the afternoon so please don't miss none of that is there is no charge a lot of ladies good tea i love tea i grew up with tea and i love tea and and all the food that you can drink and eat with tea and so don't miss these two big activities let's go to the bible today and I uh, have to apologize. Some people say, when is he going to start the, the Beatitudes series? It's going to start uh, if the Jesus tarries to come next Sunday. And, but I was just being passionate in love with this whole names of God. Go with me to Exodus chapter 15. It's not going to come up here. We're going to talk about one more name in the Hebrew where God reveals himself. And it's Exodus chapter 15. If you have a whole Bible, you open the Bible, you're going to find Genesis, and that's the beginning, and then Exodus talks about the Exodus, the walking of the Hebrew people out of Egypt, and so that's the second uh, book in the Bible, and so just go, and, and we're going to read this, and we're going to talk about Jehovah Rapha, which in Hebrew means, I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord the heals, I am the Lord the mends, but it's speaking more in a personal way level and here is the story they have just just they just crossed the red sea the hero people moses leading them god is leading them really they just crossed the red sea you know what happened in the red sea they were uh, the enemy the egyptian army was coming behind them god opens the red sea they cross the red sea and the enemy's army is crossing the red sea with the sea open you see in the movie or the cartoon what happened and god closes the red sea and the whole army uh, swallows a lot of water, they get drowned, and they die, and now they can start their journey through the promise, to the promised land, through uh, the desert. And here is Genesis 15, 22. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. One word is what we need, and this story we find that you says, I am your healer. Help us today to hear your voice speaking to our hearts and our lives. Lord, help me to communicate this word with mercy and with grace, knowing that I am not better than anybody in this room, God, and help everybody to understand that I just struggle like them, 
but we love you, and you have transformed and changed our lives, and we will give everything we have to continue walking with you, God. You're the best thing that ever happened to us. We love you, Jesus, for dying on the cross or for preparing heaven for us, but I ask you that you help us to understand something in our lives today that will help us to grow, to become more like Jesus, to enjoy more the abundant life you have for us, and also to be a light to many around us. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody says... Amen. Let's read the whole story to verse 27. Then Moses, verse 22, 15, Exodus 15, Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Three days, no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Say with me, bitter. Bitter. The waters were bitter. Therefore, it was named Mara. Mara means bitter. So the people grumbled at Moses, saying, What should we drink? Then he, Moses, cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And he threw it into the waters, and the waters became Sweet. There he made for them a statue and regulation, and there he tested them. And he said, If you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God, <laughs> if you will give earnest heed to the voice, the voice, one word of God, the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put, God says, I will put none of the diseases on you. You're not going to be sick, which I have put on the Egyptians. For I, the Lord, I am your Rapha. I am Jehovah Rapha. says, I am your healer. What does it say? I am what? Your healer. Then they came to Elim, where there were 12 springs, important, 12 springs of water, and 70, 70 date palms, and they come there beside the waters. I told you for a couple of Sundays, we're going to talk today about bitterness. And we've been saying there is a small series that God reveals his powerful name, not in a picnic, not Christmas morning where they're opening gifts, not in a quinceanera or a party. He reveals his name in moments of great crisis for the people of Israel. We looked at Abraham for a couple of weeks. Now we see Moses. And here it says, I am, in Hebrew it says, I am in verse 26 at the end, I am Jehovah Rapha, which means I am your healer. The names of God were given, not for us just to preach or teach or sing about it, they were given in the middle of a crisis. And this crisis is probably one, if not the most common crisis in people's life from the beginning of mankind till today, and that is bitterness in the heart. It is crazy here that God comes in the middle of a very difficult time. Three days away, walking from where? From the Red Sea. They couldn't take water to drink from the Red Sea unless they had some crazy system with computers to take the salt out of it. I don't think they did that. So they most likely were water, with water walking with, without water or with a little bit of water they, they'll still have. And they walked for three days. The max amount of time that a person can survive physically without water. And the Bible says, when they came to Marah, they couldn't drink the waters because the waters were bitter. 
And they, and they was named Mara. It seems like this place already was named Mara, which means bitterness. And the Bible says that they did what? The people, verse 24, grumbled at Moses saying, what shall we drink? They have a bitter something that should give them life like water, but it was bitter. They cannot drink it. And instead of them saying, Moses, or you know what, guys? God just showed up three days ago, did this huge miracle opening the Red Sea. He's our provider. He's the one who did everything. How many of you guys, God did something in your life? Can, you, can I see you in your hands? Did something maybe big that he blessed you. He changed your heart. He saved your marriage. He did a miracle in your life. And this is what happened here. Three days ago, God just did this huge thing. Never heard, never happened before. Three days later, they don't have water. And the Bible says they start what? Grumbling, complaining. Instead of saying, God did this crazy, great thing. He is everything for us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to seek God. And I'm going, we're going to ask God to bless us. And he's going to do something. And he's the God of the impossible. They ran to Moses. They ran to Moses, and Moses does the right thing. He does what? He cries out to God. God shows him a tree. Last Sunday we said, uh, God told Abraham, in the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Remember, at the mountain of Calvary, was, Jesus was provided. And here, the Bible says that Moses... Put the tree in the water, cuts it down, puts it down. Jesus died on a what? On a tree. And it gets fixed. Now you have to understand one thing here. All these guys, all these ladies, all these people, some say it was a million, some say it was five millions, and this, all these numbers, but it was more than just a thousand or five thousand people. It was a ton of them. None of these people will ever enter the promised land. And they left Egypt to work, go, enter what? The promised land. And that's what I said. This is a huge crisis because bitterness and complaining and not being thankful and not trusting in God and all these things kept, the Bible says, the Israel, the Hebrews from entering the promised land. Are you following me here? This is a huge revelation. This is just happening. They are just leaving Egypt, and God allows them to face something that is what? A need of water, and the waters are bitter. And the Bible says in verse 25, then he made for them a statue. The Lord made a statue and regulation, and there he tested them. Has anybody ever done something to you that bothered you and you started to get bitter with that person? You don't have to lift your hand, but I think most of us, probably everybody has been in that place. I try to be a good husband to you. I try to be a good father. I try to be a good Christian. I serve you, Lord. I gave my tithes. I was involved in ministry. I pray. I believe. I did everything. Why do you allow me to get to this place? Why did you allow me? Why did you allow this situation that for me and my wife and my little kids and my animals are reaching the place of desperation of three days with no water?
Because then God takes them. After this, verse 27, the Bible says they came to Elim where there were 12 springs. And what else? 70 date palms. There is a reason. God, every letter, every dot, every comma, everything that you find, everything has a meaning in the Bible. And numbers have big, big meanings. In the Bible, 12 means God's perfect government. 12 disciples. One killed himself, God put another one. Are you following me? They're going to start the church of Christ. You and me are a part of it. Twelve gates or doors to open into, to get into, into the new Jerusalem that God has built for us after, into heaven. You, you kind of go to Revelation. Twelve, that's going to be God's ultimate perfect government in heaven when they twelve doors to enter the city of God. How many tribes in the Old Testament to govern the people of God? How many tribes? Twelve tribes. And God takes them to a place. And this, we're going to go deep today, okay? We're going to go really deep today. So you have to pay attention if you want to take some notes. Twelve means God's perfect government. But the word government if there is something that relates to government, is what? Is what? The word authority. We just sing, and we don't even talk with, with, with Brianna about the song selection. One word from you, one word from you, and we want your authority. All this that God is doing here is trying to show the people of Israel I have not reached any place in your heart yet of total perfect government of your life. And then the word 70 in the Bible means completion. The longest there is bitterness in my heart towards God or towards somebody that did something to me, or maybe you even have to deal with something you did with somebody else. You're enjoying God's blessings. You say, I am on point 10. I'm doing the right thing. God blesses me here. God blesses me there. He's helping me here. He's helping me there. But God does not want us to go to 10. He does not want us to go to 11. He wants us to go to where? To 12. Where God can completely govern our heart. And if you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, and if there is any bitterness in your heart, I know that it's not easy for me to live in that place of 12 because people have done things to me and the enemy is more than once in a week, once the, more than once a week trying to bring me to a place where God is not in control of my mind, of my mouth, and of my emotion. And all he has to do, the devil, my flesh helps to remind me of something that somebody did to me. And I get mad, and I cannot believe, and why did God allow this? Do you, you understand what I'm, what I'm saying here? Twelve means God, total, perfect authority in your life. And for us to reach that place, we need to have Victory over bitterness. Things were hard. Things were difficult. Things looked impossible. But God just opened the Red Sea. 
three days, no water. They find water. They see water at the distance. The young guys and the young ladies and the ones who call themselves athletic are probably running three days. You follow, three days. You're going to be, be thirsty just after 24 hours <laughs> of no drinking water. Have you ever tried? I have never tried 24 hours without water. I cannot even imagine what it is. Three days. They are running to a stream of water who they are thinking this is going to satisfy what I need. Most desperate in my life right now, water. Because they might have some rice or some beans or whatever. They just left a few days ago. They just left a few days ago. They probably have some animals they can still slaughter, some sheep and some goats, and, and, and they have some flour. But without water, you cannot cook beans. Without water, you cannot cook rice. Without water, you cannot even make a, a, a cake. Something you thought that was going to bring your life, life into your life, turned bitter. If I will only find the perfect spouse, the wonderful man, the wonderful woman who will love me, and I'll love back, I do everything. I'll be the perfect husband, the perfect father, the perfect wife. If God, you gave me a spouse, if you would only give me a child, if you would only give me two kids, God, if you, can, if you would only give me a better job, if you could only help me to graduate from college, and I'm not saying none of these things are bad, but if you only open a door for ministry, if you open the door for this to happen, I really, really, if I can start my business... Have you ever been in a place in your life where something that is supposed to give you life turned bitter? Let me see your hand. No. Turn bitter. Bitter. And it turned more bitter than you ever <laughs> imagined it was going to turn bitter. Yeah. Yeah. Your pastor understands that. <laughs> I totally know what I'm talking about. This, no way. I've been doing this before. I was here before. I did this for a while, and it was pretty cool. I used to drink water three days ago, five days ago, two weeks ago, and it was awesome. How did they know that the water was bitter? You cannot test bitterness with your hands or your foot, correct? They had to drink it. And they complain. The most bitterness inside of you, inside of me, the more quicker, the more bigger, the more faster, the more louder you will, say with me, complain. Do you agree with me? The most bitterness in this river or maybe your river is not my river. The most bitterness, the faster, the louder, the crazier, the madness, the quicker, you will complain. They are questioning God. It's not that hard to start questioning God. Have you ever questioned God? Maybe you have. Lord, this son of mine, this daughter of mine, I love you and I serve you and I did everything right. Why you allow this kid to get hooked to drugs? to get hooked in the wrong relationship, to have mental issues, to have physical issues, to have these huge emotional issues, 
She dated this guy and loved this guy for eight years. He left her now. She is depressed for years. God, why? 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 Because we live in a fallen world full of sin. But the other thing I will tell you, remember, this was the reason why they never enter the promise. Today. Because God knows how easy our human nature will fall into bitterness. And God, instead of chastising them, wiping them out, Listen, do you think God is going to get them through the Red Sea and destroy every one of his, the enemies who is chasing them and three days later? What kind of father is going to let them die of thirstiness and lack of H2O? Am I right with the chemicals there? <laughs> In the middle of the desert, when he just opened the Red Sea, if God had power to open the Red Sea, you think that God can make water come from under the ground? There's a lot of water under the ground in a lot of places in the world, amen? <laughs> oh, just a good old rain. And they collect the rain with the goats, skins, whatever they have, the tarps, whatever they did, it, and that's it, and they'll solve it. And God can give them 20 minutes of good rain every day. God can do this in a million different ways. Listen, the problem is never my circumstances. The problem is always in here. And God is trying to fix right away. Listen to what I'm saying. God is trying to fix right away the problem they have with complaining and grumbling from the very beginning of the long journey. And they never, ever, ever, ever grow and mature in this area. God sends them water. God opens the, the rock. God sends bread from heaven every day. He sends birds from heaven every day. He opens them. The, nothing works. Opens the, the land, people fall and die, they don't learn. A lot of snakes bite some of them. And they, God tries everything. And they never, 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 never become thankful for what God has provided and is provided. And will provide for them. The Bible says that none of them die of starvation or of lack of water. Their shoes, the same sandals they left Egypt, they never got old. The clothing never gets old. Living in the desert, how often <laughs> have you have you have a, a these people didn't have a closet full of, 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 of shoes and they had one pair of shoes probably, maybe two. They had to wear the same clothing every day or every other day. They didn't have any more what they needed to make more shoes. If you can understand the heart of God in this, they complain. Moses prays. God fixes the water situation. But in verse 26, on the almost end of the story, go with me to verse 26. God says, if you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord, your God. First thing. So, don't think I, I got it all together. Don't think I'm better than you, because I'm God told me to become a pastor, and I 
and I do this and I preach. But healing of bitterness always starts with hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That's why we have to surrender to God. You can complain or you can surrender. Write that down somewhere. It's very simple. You can complain or you can surrender. But we don't have a hard time surrendering. Why? Because we want to understand everything. I'll surrender when God explains everything. I surrender when everything makes sense for me. I surrender when God changes the waters and he changes my wife, he changes my spouse, he changes my kids, he changes my boss, he changes the people in my church, he changes my neighbor. I'll surrender. Complaining is one option. Surrendering to God knows what he's doing. I don't understand. Remember Job, come Thursday, learn what Job. The Lord has given, the Lord has taken, May his name be glorified. And that's the end of the story. <laughs> Wife comes, curse God, and die. That's what the devil wants Job to do. And if you start reading everything the friends tell him, it's like, you something wrong. Your kids, and you, you hiding. The devil is trying for days and days and days and days. To make Job get so mad of God because he knows that he's walking in righteousness. And why does God? The Bible says that when his wife says, curse God and die, Job says, you've spoken like a foolish woman. Pretty soft word to the wife who wants him to die. No? Foolish. You can call it some other things. <laughs> I can give Job some ideas. <laughs> and then he says, are we only going to take from the Lord the good and not the bad also? You have to be at a certain level of maturity to understand that. <laughs> because when, if you're still a baby, you cry and scream because there's just a little something going on in your diaper that doesn't make you very happy. You understand what I'm saying? That's what babies do. A little wet, but then you grow and you can be walking in the rain and you're strange and you just, it's okay. But I want to take you somewhere here today. The Bible says, if you hear my voice and you do what is right, what is he saying? After you hear me talking to you, you got to do what I am telling you to do. <laughs> Very simple. You want to have victory over bitterness. And see, God takes them to an extreme place, three days of no water. I struggle. Before some big things happen in my life, I struggle with small little different frustrations, with small little stupid things that people or my family will do to me. I'm very honest with you. But God then took me to some huge, huge things I never imagined anybody can ever do to me. These little things now are like, the, honestly, it's like, they could have done a lot better, worse than that. <laughs> a lot worse than that. They still might watch me online, or they might still, one of these days, you know, <laughs> stop talking or whatever. But God has to take them to a high level of disappointment. And they don't learn. If you hear my voice and you do what is right on his side and give ear to his commandments, look at the word, look in the Bible, let God say, and keep all my statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians. And he's talking physically, but I'm talking about a disease called bitterness, which is the worst, probably the one of the worst, if not the worst disease you can have in your heart, is bitterness. 
for I, the Lord, I am. Wait a little bit. No matter what version you're reading, what translation you're reading, he doesn't. What did God just healed? What did God just heal? What did he just turn bitter to sweet? What did he turn what? Don't you think it would make more sense if the scripture would say, I am the Lord who heals the water. I am the Lord who changes your situation. I am the Lord who is going to change your spouse like that. I'm going to make a miracle in your kids like that. I'm going to change your finances like that. I am going to heal the water. But God says, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am what? Say it. He is my healer. He is your Can you see it now? Because if we want 12 springs of water, perfect governing of God over my mind, my emotions, my decisions, my values, I'll say this. I hope you remember. Everything that's going around you, happening to you, they do it to you, is happening around you, is all spider web. The Lord needs to do what? Kill the spider. So I do something and I offend Raul. And he's mad at me. He stops coming to church and his family is not going to come to church anymore because he's so mad at me because I just said something to him that was not nice. And so he's waiting. I'm going to use you, Raul, because we talk a lot and I hope we know each other for a long time. It might be after this he's going to have to forgive me <laughs> if he wants to have victory. But then I go, and I repent, and I ask for forgiveness, and I talk to everybody that heard this thing that I said about Raul, and I told everybody I was wrong, and that was a big old lie. Raul is one of the most righteous men in our church, and I was a jerk with him. And so down Raul, okay, now I'll go back to church, because you, the water was healed. What's going to happen next time? then Victor does something that Raul doesn't like. You know where the, you see where the spider is? I'm telling you this because I know what I'm talking about. I know how easy it is to try to do everything and you will lose sleep trying to fix the waters in your life. And God says, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am here, the God who heals. Another word for healing is mending. Another word for healing is fixing. So God can chastise them they are complaining. He can destroy them. He can find somebody else. They found water. They found the spouse. They found the family. They found ministry. They found the job. But it was turned bitter. And God reveals his name and says, I am the Lord the heals the heart. That's why, can I tell you, if you have the Holy Spirit in your life, you have fearing God woman, a fearing God man, you are the most multi-million 
richest person in this whole city, in this whole county, in this whole planet, because everybody else who doesn't have God in their lives have nobody who can heal the heart. The money cannot heal the heart. Psychology cannot heal the heart. You know what psychology tells you now? Psychology, a lot of times, makes you to become more bitter. Oh, yeah, you have an issue, young man? It's your father who raised you. And so now you're more bitter with your dad. And then more bitter because your mom knew, and she didn't do anything about it. You see how the world, how stupid, can I say how full, how dumb the world has become? So instead of us surrendering our lives to Jesus and letting him come and change everything inside of me and let me walk to the desert, we allow the lies of Satan. I'm not saying psychology is all wrong, but I'm saying in this case, it's not helping you to heal from anything. (laughs) And you know what happens after that? You find a friend who is also messing up, and they're doing decisions, and they want to take responsibility for the decisions. But you inherit the psychology, and so you tell your friend, hmm, what did your dad do to you? How did they raise you? What did your mom? And so, you know, see, did you see how this disease is spreading all over the world? And God says, I'll heal it. I'll heal the water. I'll change. Jump with me to Hebrews 12. And you're going to see that this is not just for the Old Testament people. Because, I will say this to you, bitterness can rob heaven from your life. Did you hear what I said? Bitterness can rob heaven from your life. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 14, and 15, Pursue what? Arguing, fighting, grumbling, kicking, and screaming. No, it says what? Pursue peace with all people. And then it says, and what? Oh, wow, peace is related to another word. What is it? Holiness. The important thing is if you don't have holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, say with me carefully, carefully. Say one more time, carefully. Look at the person next to you and say, looking carefully, look carefully, look carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. By the grace of God, we have been saved and we're going to heaven. The Bible says, pursue peace, pursue holiness. It doesn't say, your problem will be fixed when I change your spouse. No, -uh. it says, pursue peace, pursue holiness. Which without that holiness, none of us will see the Lord looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. So now we are going something about losing the grace of God, and if we don't have the grace of God, we are not making it into heaven. But wait, what, 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 what is it saying the next? Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. I know what I'm talking about. Katie, we are not going to talk about that subject. Because this subject, what I did to you, what you did to me, this area where we disagree, this thing that I don't like about you, this thing that you don't like about me, let's not talk about it. Because we know that this is going to bring what? Spring up trouble. What is a spring up? You know, the waters are calm, it's peace, it's beautiful. <laughs> and it's like, peace. It's like, 
What a beautiful place. I used to go to this farm and we drink this water and you can see the water. You can see a hole way down there and the water is coming through this. From way down, I don't know from where it's coming. It's a beautiful place. But what I see here is a fun and now whew, springing up. It's starting to get all bubbly and all crazy. Have you been there? Anybody in the marriage have ever been there, you know? <laughs> you just say that one thing. You just remember that one thing. You just bring up that one subject. You just bring up the... <laughs> it's interesting. I had pastored one person for many, many years. I'm not going to say more than 15 years. That's what I'm going to say, okay? So you don't have to figure out who it was. They're not sitting in this room. And we had some issues more than a decade ago. And everything seemed to be hunky-dory. Until one day, we were talking about something, and the subject came up again. And I thought it was put to rest for a long time in this person's heart. There's one thing I have against you, Pastor, he said. Well, two, he said. This time, I remember details. Where we were standing, what was going on, the conversation we had, the things that I said, the things that I did, everything. And the other, and said, wow. How many years? I wanted to say no, but I didn't say anything. I thought, I thought we put to rest this, like, more than 10 years ago. Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause And it doesn't end there. And by this, many become defiled. What is defiled means? Let me explain to you in my very poor English. I know what a file is. You know what a file is? Defile is what? It's out of the file, okay? The Bible says that our names are in the book of life. Our name is file in the book of life. And one day we're going to be before God and the names are going to be set. And if your name is there, you want your name to be there. I make sure of that. If your name is not written, what is it? Defile. We want God to do what he did for the Israelites, but he will make no favor for us changing our circumstances. Because when he changes our circumstances, nothing bothers us anymore. And the problem continues in the heart. But I'm here to tell you today, you and I need to do the first step. God wants to heal the waters in your life but if you allow the Lord to show you and to show me where is the bitterness towards God because he allowed this horrible thing to happen to you because he still hasn't fixed this area in your life or in your family or in your kids or in your marriage or in your health. Bitterness. You can also be bitter with somebody in your life. Because the subject comes out and the springs of waters are going crazy. Or maybe, maybe there is an area in your life that the enemy brings back into your memory and says, remember this that you did. God cannot use you. God is having a hard time forgiving you. 
Or maybe there is somebody who keeps reminding you this that you did six months or six years ago. And I want you to close your eyes right there where you are. The Lord wants to fix the waters. He wants to fix cancer. He wants to fix your family. He wants to fix relationships. He wants to fix your marriage. But everything, everything starts with a bitterness problem. And God is calling you to a personal altar this morning where you can say, God, show me. Show me. Show me anything inside of me. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a champion in this area, but I know the Lord is speaking to me very, very, very deeply. And I'm trying to get to the place where my friends can remember some things of the past. Katie can bring to the conversation some things of the past. And I know that I know that I know that the Lord has healed me. And I don't get mean about it anymore. I don't have to be ugly about it anymore. I don't have to talk trash about them anymore. I don't have to. Because it's not about the size of the offense about the size of the healing and the mercy that you allow God to put in your heart. I'll say this one more time and we'll pray. The Lord showed me this. The Lord showed me this. I'm telling you, the Lord showed me this because I wasn't even thinking in the sermon. I was praying in one of these nights and, and the Lord just, just talked to me like that in my heart, in my mind. He told me it's never about the size of the offense. It's always about the size of the mercy that you allow God to put in you and that you can pour on other people. 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 You can pour on other it's almost like you feel like, God, I don't want to go to biggest, bigger offenses than what I went already. But if you think that I have to, well, I was in kindergarten for a long time. And I feel like you told me to make me a senior. And I graduated from high school. Maybe there is other levels. I am the Lord, your healer. Father, in this very moment, all of us in this room, many of us have heard your word and have heard the voice and the word of your Holy Spirit in our hearts, Lord. Some people in this place started the healing maybe a long time ago. Some of them are maybe starting today. But I know the sweet life of a victory over bitterness because when there is no bitterness, the devil can bring the old subject in the most ugliest way. <laughs> and we hear the voice of God. You speak to me and you say, let the devil do his thing. Let them be me. Let them be do. Let no. Shut up. Shut up think, don't stay, I'm healing you, I'm healing you, I'm healing you, and Father, I ask you the same for this congregation, God, for those watching online this morning, I ask you the same, Lord, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, the Holy Spirit is Rapha, Jesus is Rapha. Jesus is Rafa. Lord, and I know that this afternoon and this week, the enemy is going to try to come in a very ugly way to stir the waters. And I ask you, God, that you would speak to people's heart and say, I am your healer. If you want to keep 
falling into the bitterness? Did you want to keep falling into the fights? Did you want to keep falling into the argument? Did you want to keep falling into the grumbling? If you want to keep falling into fishing in the old sea, the old rotten fish that I threw in the bottom of the sea of forgiveness, did you want to keep falling or do you want to have Jehovah Rapha give you victory? Lord, I ask you this morning that your spirit will continue to do the work that you've been doing in our lives, God. about the matter of the offense the ugly word the ugly action the ugly intention is about the matter of the mercy you have put in our lives God the Lord help us to walk in the sweet victory of victory of bitterness free 12 12 12 12 in our lives in Jesus name we pray Amen God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.